Campaign 2020 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Quick Trip, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, and Wisconsin Operating Engineers Local 139. Jeff Johnson of Wausau is a Democrat running in the 85th Assembly District. The primary is August 11th. Jeff, welcome to Wisconsin Eye. Well, thank you for having me. I have a long list of, of specific questions, but I want to begin with this. You have on your uh, campaign websites or social media the, the, this, this idea. We need to stop doing stupid things in Madison. Okay, I'll bite. Give me two or three examples. Sure. The most obvious and glaring one at this time during a pandemic is accept the Medicaid money. I mean, why wouldn't we accept our own money coming back? We're a donor state. We pay more into the federal government than we get back. So why wouldn't we want to accept hundreds of millions of dollars every year to cover more than 80,000 Wisconsinites? We paid for it. Why aren't we benefit from benefiting from it? I'm sorry, stupid is the only word I can think of for that. <laughs> okay, number okay. number two example? Number two, we are quickly becoming an island of stupid, surrounded by states who are legalizing marijuana and taxing it. You, now, support, that, more, you, you support that medical and recreational? Absolutely. Okay, and, go ahead, uh, the, reason I, the reason I do that is because it is safer than alcohol. Um, and I did some research on this on my own. I traveled out to Colorado. I met with state officials, with local law enforcement and others researching because we were going to, we had a referendum in Marathon County um, that passed with 83% positive votes. In, now, was that in narrowly on medical or medical? That was on medical. You're okay. correct. It was on medical, but even, even, I can pretty much guarantee over 60%. If, if you have over 80% for medical, you're going to have more than 60% for recreational. And okay. everybody knows, let's be honest, um, I'm going to be honest in my campaign. If you pass medicinal, recreational is a few years down the road. Okay. Why, take, why have that intermediate, intermediate step? Just okay, go did, right to it. Do you have a so, third example of stupid? Third example of stupid, let's stop suing each other. <laughs> why do we have... Robin Voss and Scott Fitzgerald suing the governor. It's all about power and control. It's not about serving the people of Wisconsin. That's one of the main things I hear when I talk to people is they, you know, first of all, they're tuned out because it's non-functional. And secondly, when they do tune in a little bit, they kind of like smack themselves on the forehead and say, they're doing what? Yeah, let's stop suing each other and spend our time figuring out how we can make Wisconsinites' lives better rather than how we can maintain our power. I mean, oh, come on. Okay. That, that's ready? where we're at, and I think those three things are pretty foolish. Okay, time for some uh, specific questions. The governor has said pandemic may cut state tax collections in the budget year that begins today by $2 billion. That's with a B. Yep. If you're sitting in the assembly, and that's, and that's true, you got mm -hmm. tough choices. You, do you cut current programs? Do you raise taxes or fees? Now, I know you're on the Marathon County Board, so you're dealing with a little bit of this already, but from a statewide perspective, where would you go? Well, un unlike the state legislature and state government on the Marathon County Board, we keep a reserve of cash. We can weather this storm. Uh, the state does not. The state carries a lot of debt that uh, we do not as a, as a municipal or as a, a county. So it is going to be more difficult. Now, there will be some federal dollars, um, some significant federal dollars to help offset some of the loss of revenue, but it's very specifically targeted. The devil is going to be in the details. It really is on how you balance. You don't want to cut too deeply because then you go into a death spiral because cutting spending alone is not going to solve the problem. Uh, it's going to depress economic activity within the state and result in even lower revenues for a longer extended period of time. We have to be smart about it. We have to take advantage of, of good rates when they're available. 
And uh, quite frankly, there's a lot of damage we've got to undo. We're in a pretty big hole, even without COVID-19 to start with. Okay. Okay. Um, new subject, reapportionment. The Constitution said legislatures and governors uh, should enact new congressional district and legislative boundaries. The governor says, let's have a people's commission draft them and then send them to the legislature and governor to be adopted. Which, uh, which model do you support? I support the Iowa model. Let's have an independent commission of professionals, uh, retired judges, people who are nonpartisan. No politician, including anybody from my party, should have any say in drawing the districts. It should be a nonpartisan issue that is just done to balance the numbers as population shifts. Um, Politicians should never pick their voters. Voters should pick their politicians. So I don't want anything partisan involved in it, whether that's a people's commission or whether it's, you know, the Iowa model. Um, I don't care as long as it's done fairly, because right now the system we have is so out of whack that the Republicans got 200,000 less votes and got 63% of the seats. That's just not actual representation. It's not a fair representation of, of what the people of Wisconsin want. So okay. we need to get partisanship out. Americans have a better understanding than two months ago of how some police officers treat those in their custody. My question is, do we need statewide standards for uh, how police treat those in custody? Do we need to ban chokeholds? Do we need to ban no-knock warrants? Should we keep a database of officers most prone to violence? Absolutely, and this is a a topic I know a little bit about. Um, Prior to retiring from the state of Wisconsin, I was a probation parole agent. Uh, During a five-year period, it was my job to teach agents arrest, custody, and transport, how to safely take people into custody, um, get them under control, transport them safely. So, and, and our training program was modeled directly after defense and arrest tactics, which is what most of Wisconsin law enforcement uses. The acronym is DAT. Um, we do need a statewide standard. It needs to be consistent. Not only that, and I have to credit my wife with this idea, I'm not going to steal it. Just about every other profession in the state of Wisconsin is licensed. We need to license law enforcement. It would give us an intermediate step with licensing and regulation to keep bad officers from hopping from department to department. Because right now, uh, once you're, you're quote unquote, certified law enforcement, um, unless you're criminally charged, you can go anywhere. And so we need to have an intermediary step to look at officers who are going through that, you know, and, and there could be automatic triggers for when their, their license is reviewed. You have so many incidents reported, whatever. But that's one step we could take. We should not be using chokeholds on any, on any long-term basis. Um, to gain control, yes. We had a saying when I taught arrest, custody, and transport. You're nice until it's time not to be nice. And as soon as you have control, you're nice again. And once you have control, you transport that person. You never leave a person on their stomach in a prone position due to a, a, I mean, even without putting pressure on them, people die from that, uh, from compression asphyxiation. So yes, we need standards. Everyone needs to be taught the same way and they need to do it. Two questions on property taxes, which is a Marathon County board member, you know very well. Um, Mm -hmm. Wisconsin has some of the highest property taxes in the nation, which is why schools, local governments, your county, your levy limits are capped. You can get around those limits with, if you pass referendums, but if you're a member of the assembly, would you vote to keep these property tax caps and limits or get rid of them? It, it's, this is really a, a double-edged sword. It's a tricky question because um, those caps also limit local control, which I am very much in favor of. It ties the hands of localities and it's not just um, county associated, not just counties, not just cities, it's school boards. Um, and other municipalities that have their hands tied to a certain degree. Um, That being said, it's a bit of a misnomer when Wisconsin is called a super high tax state because we have been a higher tax state, but a very low fee state. We're not paying $500 a year to register our vehicles. We're not paying, you know, 
Nick deemed nickel and dimed or hundred and two hundred dollars out of the pocket every time you turn around like you are in some other states. Um, don't kid yourself. Those with lower tax rates still manage to get the money out of their, their citizens. They just do it with fees. So we've always also been a very high service level of service state. Um, and that's deteriorated somewhat because we have capped and frozen essentially property taxes. But there is a need, um, especially with elderly folks, for them to be able to afford to stay in their home to keep it under control. I think we have to come up with some kind of hybrid system to give the um, local municipalities and, and local units of government a little bit more flexibility in, than they have now, um, yeah. while still protecting while still protecting those that you know we don't want to price anybody out of their own home. Because well, when you when you talk about alternative revenue sources. Um, have you considered the idea of broadening the 5% sales tax to some products and services that are now exempt, or do you have other ideas? Well, I, I think that is would definitely be worth taking a look at. Uh, Wisconsin is a high tourism state. We did an incredibly stupid thing when we didn't raise the gas tax and instead raised the registration fee, which is paid 100% by Wisconsinites. Um, we should go back to indexing the tax gas tax, because a lot of the folks that are coming here, that would generate revenue, not out of Wisconsinites pockets, but out of visitors who are benefiting from all the investment we make in this state. So I, I think that would, would go a long way. It would make a big difference. Uh, but I would be open, open to looking at individual, whether it's room taxes, whether it's the ability of, of municipalities to, to, to have different ways to generate revenue because they're all being starved. They, they truly are. Should local governments have the ability to adopt a half cent sales tax instead of just counties? Um, well, I, I, I would be open to that. Okay. I would be open to that. Okay. You mentioned that we should index a gas tax, which is one thing, but should we also uh, raise it a few pennies? And if so, how many pennies? I'd have to, I, I can't give you a, a number right now. I would have to see, see the information, see what the impact would be. Um, okay. But it was, it was foolish to take off the indexing um, because it put us in a transportation hole where now our transportation budget, and I found this really disturbing. I serve on the infrastructure committee. And so I follow on this because our, one of our, big exp our biggest expenditure is roads. And uh, what I found out is the DOT used to carry about 8% debt, which meant that 8% of their budget went to debt service. Yep. Now it's over 22%. Yep. So for every million dollars they get, 220,000 is going to the bank and not going into roads. There's been some real irresponsible behavior in Madison. And uh, I, I don't need to tell you who's been in charge of that. Um, the COVID-19 pandemic, what are some specific examples of higher costs your county faces because of the pandemic? One of, one of the areas is um, we're losing revenue that we normally get, would get from providing services because people are staying home. For example, um, we have a facility known as North Central Healthcare Facility. And it's a consortium of, of surrounding counties and it, they do nursing home care, they do rehabilitative care, um, they do temporary psychiatric care. I mean, it's pretty all encompassing. They have a therapy pool open to the public, it's, but it's not being utilized and it's not generating the income that it normally would. And we also have transport service to bring people from around the county to the facility. And with people staying home, we're, we're not having that activity. We're also not seeing the sales tax activity. I mean, we're not, our sales tax revenue, every, everyone's being hit by that. Yeah, I think mean, that's just kind of a given. Yeah. Uh, tourism is down. I mean, we're on the edge of we're on the edge of up north. It depends where you start from. Um, but tourism is a big deal up here, and yep. it's down. Okay. So we we've, we've been directly impacted uh, without question. And it's going to take a while to, to come back. Fortunately, we do have some things going in our favor. Um, this area has a tremendously diverse manufacturing base, which really hasn't slowed that much. I mean, it has slowed down, but
but it's still there. And traditionally, this area weathers recessions and economic downturns better than most okay. uh, due to that diversity. I mean, we still build things here. And, uh, and, and it's diversified enough where we don't have one huge employer um, that we have to depend on. So, right. Um, right. The, the pandemic hits the economy and healthcare providers that all the state and uh, all the governments uh, pro, uh, rely on. Um, so I guess if you're in the assembly voting on the next state budget, do you, do you think that budget should make an even greater priority Wisconsin hospitals? Well, I think if we accept the, the expanded Medicaid money, that's going to pump over $250 million a year into the system, okay. uh, provide more co more coverage, increase the revenues for hospitals, and it's not going to cost us anything to say yes. And I still don't understand, I'm sorry, it is stupid not to take that money. Um, then we need to reassess and see where we need to, to invest more. Um, this is a once-in-a-life pandemic. Uh, I don't think people can really be faulted too much within the healthcare industry for not being over overly prepared for it. Okay. Uh, no one's had to deal with this. In, in right. Life. Should businesses so, that should businesses that follow the prescribed COVID nineteen health and safety rules and regs of WEDC or this uh, the the CDC should they be immu uh, should they be immune from frivolous lawsuits, Jeff? Here's the deal. What's a flip frivolous lawsuit? And right now, Wisconsin is the wild, wild west, thanks to the, the Supreme Court. We have no enforceable rules. Nothing can be enforced. So if there are no enforceable rules, um, I don't know. How do you hold somebody liable for not enforcing something that's not enforceable? Okay. I, I don't know what the answer to that question is. Um, we're not allowed to exercise common sense. I mean, this has been a failure from the top down. The federal government abdicated their responsibility. They said, go ahead, let the states deal with it. Governor Evers was dealing with it here, and, this, and Robin Voss and Scott Fitzgerald intervened. The Supreme Court said, no, you can't do that. It falls in your court, and we've had absolutely no activity, no guidance, nothing out of the Republicans in the Assembly and the Senate. Zero. So yeah. we're all kind of on our own. Yeah, and there is no, there are no enforceable things. So, I don't know how. How do you sue somebody for violating something that's not enforceable? Okay, new okay. subject. New subject. Um, yeah. A study said in 2015, outstate contractors were awarded 72 million in contracts for public works projects from lo from local governments. That number doubled to 146 million in 2018. The question: Should should bidding standards and requirements give preferences? To Wisconsin companies when local governments authorize these public works projects? Absolutely. There, there's no question about that. But the more we keep the money locally, the more of a multiplier effect that money has. Um, we don't want to write checks that are going out of state to Ohio or Texas or any other state. I want that money staying in Wisconsin, generating more activity and making Wisconsinites' lives better. Okay. And besides, and, and even beyond that, I'll take a Wisconsinite's work ethic over anybody's. Okay. We're a, a different breed here. Okay, we're almost out of time, but two quick questions. We've talked about a bunch of, uh, a bunch of issues. Is there any one uh, uh, theme or campaign issue that's important to your campaign you want to describe quickly? There's a, a couple of things that are really important in the 85th Assembly District. Um, number one is we need to fix the damn roads. I mean, people depend on that. The folks out out side of the metro area um they, they've been getting rough we're doing what we can we're doing more with less every year and and we just can't continue in that downward spiral secondly we need broadband access there are portions of this county where you don't have access to broadband your cell phone won't work because there's no coverage and because of the telecom deregulation act landlines are being abandoned by companies because they're no longer profitable so we have a number of folks in this county, hundreds of them, with no access to emergency services. That is unsafe. We need to address it. Okay. And uh, lastly, health care. We need to address health care. We need to accept the money. It would benefit a lot of people in this county. I can't give you an exact number, but I know statewide it's over 80,000. Okay. Um, 
So those three, three items specifically and restore some local control. Um, and it's not just, and it's not just the money, it's the ability to bargain with your employees and the ability to work with your employees to create a better workplace. Uh, last question, differences between you and your opponent on uh, uh, August 11th? I really don't know my opponent. Um, I would say one difference is I'm a lifelong Wisconsinite. I've lived in this. I was born in Superior, grew up in Oshkosh, and lived in the Wausau area since 1993. Uh, the only time I didn't live in Wisconsin is my four years in the Air Force, uh, where I served, you know, getting training and then four, three years over in Germany. Um, I've been involved with politics, not as an elected official until recently, but as a volunteer and, and through my union, I was involved in, in politics. I was the chairman of the state employees political action committee for quite a period of time. And um, so I know how the process works. It's not going to be a steep learning curve for me. I'm familiar with the issues. I'm comfortable with the issues. And, and I recognize that Wisconsinites, like I said before, we're a little bit different. Um, we're a little bit different breed, and I'll give you one quick example of that. Everybody complains about their job, right? You know how Wisconsinites complain about their job? They complain because it's being done foolishly and they have a better idea. They can do it better. That's what they complain about. Um, other states, when I was in the surface, you, you, you have people from all over the country and they complain about, oh, how hard it is. And they're expecting too much. Wisconsin, I'd say, well, we're doing it, you know, in a way that doesn't make sense. We can do it better if they just listen to me because Wisconsinites really care about what they do. They really do. Thank so you. So I want to be the representative that cares about them in Madison, the way they care about what they do. Jeff Johnson of Wausau is the Democratic candidate in the 85th Assembly District. The primary is August 11th. Jeff, thanks for talking to Wisconsin Eye. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Campaign 2020 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Quick Trip, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, and Wisconsin Operating Engineers Local 139.